In this video, we give an overview of the results concerning the connections between the absolute continuity properties of harmonic measure and the rectifiable structure of harmonic measure. We can, in some instances, write down explicitly what the harmonic measure for some, some domain is. So for example, if we have the unit disk in the complex plane, then the harmonic measure with pole at zero is just a multiple of Hausdorff measure restricted to the boundary or a multiple of surface measure. For more general domains, we can uh, also write down what harmonic measure is using Green's function. So uh, recall that the Green's function is the fundamental solution, x minus y, minus the harmonic extension of the fundamental solution um, that we get by integrating x minus c to the 1 minus d against harmonic measure with pole at y. Okay, So if we have a domain that has smooth boundary, for example, then harmonic measure is absolutely continuous with respect to surface measure. And in fact, the density of harmonic measure with respect to surface measure is just minus the normal derivative of Green's function at the boundary. So this just uses techniques that you would find in the first chapter of Evidence PDE uh, book. Okay, so this kind of opens the question, what are the general conditions for when we can ensure that harmonic measure is absolutely continuous with respect to d-dimensional Hausdorff measure or the sort of natural surface measure that you would have on the boundary of a domain in Rd plus one. So this problem actually has a long history and started in the complex plane. So I'm gonna talk about the two dimensional results first. So in 1916, the F and M Reese brothers show that for a simply connected Jordan domain, harmonic measure is mutually absolutely continuous with respect to Hausdorff measure on the boundary, if and only if the boundary is a curve of finite length. So in other words, the boundary is a rectifiable curve. So Macmillan showed a local version of this result. So if you have a simply connected domain, then harmonic measure is mutually absolutely continuous with respect to Hausdorff measure on the set of cone points for the domain. So um, by which I mean interior cone points. So every point that has a cone reaching into the domain omega, okay? Then Pomerenke later, later gave a converse to this result. So if you have a simply connected domain and a subset of the boundary where harmonic measure is absolutely continuous with respect to Hausdorff measure, then almost every point uh, in E is a cone point. So in particular, uh, harmonic measure on this set will be rectifiable. Okay, so in particular, the combination of these two results give a characterization of sets that, uh, subsets of the boundaries of simply connected uh, planar domains where harmonic measure is absolutely continuous. So harmonic measure is absolutely continuous on some subset of the boundary, if and only if the, su uh, the support of harmonic measure on that set, or that set can be covered up to a set of harmonic measure zero by a countable union of Lipschitz graphs. Okay, And we get that because recall that cone points are contained in a countable union of Lipschitz graphs. Later, Bishop and Jones gave a very powerful generalization of Macmillan's results. So, uh, absolute continuity of harmonic measure occurs uh, not just at the cone points, but just on uh, subsets of any rectifiable curve. So recall that a rectifiable curve, um, not all its points necessarily need to be cone points. Now, when we move into higher dimensions, the techniques from complex analysis are no longer available. And in fact, a lot of the results are different. You can't get as nice results as Bishops and Jones did in the complex plane. So for example, Yang Mei Wu came up, uh, showed that there exists a domain in R3 that's homeomorphic to the unit ball. So in particular, it's simply connected um, and it has, its boundary has finite measure, okay? But there exists some subset that has zero Hausdorff measure, but positive harmonic measure. So harmonic measure and house surface measure are singular in this case. So uh, the moral of this story was that, you know, even if you have strong conditions like simple connectedness, uh, you need some more structural information about your domain in higher dimensions in order to come up with anything analogous to what's known in the plane. So Dahlberg in 1977 showed that um, if you have a Lipschitz domain, so that is to say if the boundary of a domain is a union of d-dimensional Lipschitz graphs, then harmonic measure is uh, mutually absolutely continuous with respect to surface measure, and moreover it's uh, an A-infinity weight, which I won't address too much here, but it's just a more quantitative version of absolute continuity. And in fact, there are many other problems about trying to understand the quantitative absolute continuity properties of harmonic measure, but I'm not going to discuss many of those today. Um, 
So later on, David and Jerison showed that uh, if you have a domain that was non-tangentially accessible and its boundary was Alfors regular, so the measure, uh, the surface measure of any ball centered on your boundary was comparable to the radius of that ball to the power d, then you again have a mutual absolute continuity of harmonic measure with surface measure. And in fact, harmonic measure is again an A infinity weight. And actually the proof is mostly geometric measure theory. What they do is they um, approximate the boundary of the domain by Lipschitz graphs. And then they use the fact that uh, by Dahlberg's theorem, they know that harmonic measure for these uh, Lipschitz subdomains that approximate the boundary have the A infinity condition. And then they show that the uh, A infinity condition is sort of passed on from these sub Lipschitz domains to harmonic measure on the boundary. Uh, Yang Mei Wu uh, later came up with a local version of these results. She showed that if you have a domain in Euclidean space, and let's say gamma is some Lipschitz graph, then harmonic measure uh, for the domain omega is absolutely continuous with respect to Hausdorff measure on this graph. So this means that you don't need to know that the boundary of the domain is rectifiable or alpha is regular or anything like that. This, her result actually holds in a little bit more generality, but I'm stating it for Lipschitz graphs and NTA domains. Um, yeah, this should be an NTA domain. Just stating it for this case for simplicity. So the results in high dimensional Euclidean space that we saw on the previous slide were mostly concerned with sufficient conditions for absolute continuity of harmonic measure. However, there is one result that gives some necessary conditions for absolute continuity, and in fact is quite general in the sense that we don't need very strong assumptions on the domain, like it being non-tangentially accessible, for example. So given a connected open set in Rd plus one, suppose that there's some subset of the boundary where harmonic measure is absolutely continuous with respect to Hausdorff measure, then harmonic measure is de-rectifiable. Okay, so that means that it can be covered up to set of measure zero by Lipschitz images, and it is absolutely continuous with respect to Hausdorff measure. So that's the definition of a measure being de-rectifiable. So uh, one of, at least one of the authors uh, calls this the football theorem, jokingly, just because uh, there were enough authors on the paper to be able to legally form a football team. So uh, there was myself, John Sazam, uh, Steve Hoffman, Chema Martel, Svetlana Mai Baroda, Mihailis Morguglu, Chavia Tulsa, and Sasha Volberg. So in the next video, we'll uh, show this We'll prove this theorem only in the case when omega is an NTA domain, since that simplifies a lot of the arguments modulo a couple of black box results. Uh, moreover, if we take this result and combine this with Wu's theorem, we obtain a result that's very similar to the combination of Macmillan and Pomerenke's results in the plane that gave a characterization of sets for absolute continuity. So now we have the following characterization for NTA domains. So given an NTA domain, uh, harmonic measure is absolutely continuous on the boundary of the domain, if and only if there are Lipschitz graphs that cover almost all of the harmonic measure omega. So notice that this is different from asserting that the boundary is rectifiable, or that the boundary can be covered up to Hausdorff measure zero by Lipschitz graphs. So in fact, there is a theorem of Tom Wolfe, where he gave an example of a NTA domain in R3, where Hausdorff measure was supported on a set of dimensions strictly smaller than two. And then by uh, adjusting his example, you can actually come up with a NTA domain in R3, where the boundary has finite two-dimensional measure, so finite two-dimensional surface area, but there is a subset of Hausdorff dimensions strictly smaller than two that, gives, that has positive harmonic measure. And so in particular, harmonic measure is singular with respect to Hausdorff measure, on some set, even though the boundary has finite two-dimensional measure and hence is rectifiable, as we saw in one of the exercises. Okay, so what this theorem is saying is that absolute continuity has less to do with the rectifiable structure of the boundary and more to do with the rectifiable structure of harmonic measure. So absolute continuity occurs uh, exactly in the places where harmonic measure can be exhaust, the harmonic measure can be exhausted by Lipschitz graphs. So in the next video, we'll go over the proof of this result.